it's still a Uniball Vision Elite. It's just in a white shell. But there it is. The Uniball Vision Elite. Just for you guys. So, I, um, I have a bait that needs to be dipped. And I think... Um, I've just, I wrote a little tutorial script on my page on Facebook and on the Brotherhood of Custom Crankbait Painting on Facebook. And it would warrant, yeah, let's go ahead and do a video. Hey guys, Jen Cravasi at Jekyll Bates, and it's time to do it. We've talked about it, we have had questions about it, we've been frustrated over it. Not me personally, but as a part of the group, yes. So there are 5,000 plus members that have burning questions about KBS. I have a box of it right in front of me. I have a lure that needs to be coated. I've got, I think, all of the things that I need here to help better demonstrate how I store KBS. I'm going to go from the dipping process straight through to storage. I'm not going to move this into a glass jar. I think that's the part of it that's self-explanatory. I do have a jar here. This is the type of jar that I use. So from start to finish, let's talk about the stuff that you might need, the areas that you're going to want to store this in, where not to store it, how not to use it, what not to do to it, and I think it's going to help solve some of the mysteries that are surrounding KBS Diamond Strength Clear Coat. Just to let you know, I am not sponsored by KBS, but I am a proponent of them. I've had no issues really at all in four years that I've been using KBS on coating lures for a top coat or for it's not an epoxy so you don't want to confuse the two epoxy is usually something that you have to put together to make a chemical reaction to get that to harden KBS is a clear coat it's a top coat it is a one stop shopping as far as you dip it it comes prepared the chemical content in it is such that when it pulls out the air is going to harden it and dry it which is the problem also so let's get into it one of the most frequently asked questions and highest comments that I get re repeated is, do you use a, yes I do, yes I do. The only time that I don't wear a respirator is when I'm talking to you guys. So maybe once a week for a couple of hours, I'm not wearing a respirator. But the volume of business I do, even if you don't do a volume of business, even if you're a hobbyist, wear a respirator. Wear it when you're putting on, when you're dipping or brushing KBS, and certainly wear it, even though this, this stuff, most of it, that folks are using, unless you're using the auto type stuff, um, it's all water-based. But it does have other chemicals in it, so you don't want to have anything that could potentially be a carcinogen. Or in the in the way of KBS, you don't want to put anything into you want you don't want to breathe it in because it has the potential to cause neurological damage over an exposed period of time. So just take that out of the equation, wear a respirator, and you're gonna be the better painter artist for it. So I'm gonna hang that up here for right now because I am talking to you guys. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to un unbox this little KBS here. I think I have a quart that has arrived. Um, it comes pretty well boxed. It's a ground-only shipment. You can't mail this stuff, um, air mail it, I don't believe, because of the chemical makeup in it. There's a 1-800 number on it and kbscoatings.com. Their website is there. They do have MSDS sheets online and if you don't know what an MSDS it's a material data sheet it's going to tell you all about what the hazards could potentially be with this stuff as well as how to better care for your product so there's product detail sheets and you can you can write them or call them and they will be happy to send you pretty much everything that they have on a specific pro um, product and they'll also send you these things with with this so 
what you'll notice is whenever I whenever I pull these out, there's a full catalog. And KBS, I, I don't know the backstory on them 100%, but I do know that they started out as uh, automotive in the automotive industry and for other applications as well. They have paint savers. This is going to be <laughs> this is going to be key. This is what we talked about on my um, tutorial that I typed up for you guys on the Brotherhood page. This helps to take the air out of the can or the jar or whatever it is that you have. And you ha there's a picture of them spraying it into the diamond finish. Oddly enough, it's going into the diamond finish right there. Um, no coincidence, I bet, on their part. So they also recommend that you wear gloves, and I recommend it too because there's nothing more annoying than getting KBS on my hands when I'm, and I don't. I normally, for some reason, unless I'm brushing it on, I just dip it with, with my hands. But it, it can be a bear to get off your hands, so best practice there is wear your gloves. But it comes wrapped really well. They used to send it with um, crushed cardboard. Now they're using these little Air Plus shippers, which I also like because I repurpose these for sending out bulk, bulk batches of baits. So we're going to take a look at this can. The can is sealed well. Um, I use a paint key to get into these things. And I'm going to move the box out of the way. And look at that. There's your can opener. Came in the box. So they think of a lot of things, and it looks like this was made in the USA. Good on you, KBS. The next thing that you're going to notice, there it is. With the picking sheet, here's your preparations, your coverage. So it does have a comprehensive piece of paper that comes with it. Let's see what they say. Surface preparation goes through that applications, gloves and eyewear. We talked about that. There it is again. Do not paint out of the can. That basically means that don't open the, crack this open, grab a paintbrush and do that. You want to you want to put this in something that's going to better store it. So here we go. They say, dispense a working amount of diamond finish clear into a separate container and seal the original can immediately. Groove free by, by using a scoop or KBS paint spout. Use plastic wrap. There it is. Plastic wrap between the lid and the top of the can. Now they say that you can store it in there, and I know that these cans of paint, just like regular household paint, is made with a seal that you can put back in it. But if you don't get this thing down 100%, if you don't tap this back in with your plastic wrap, you're going to get air in it. And my best practice is to put it in a separate container. So the first thing that we would do if I needed it, which I don't, so we're going to leave this off to the side. The first thing that I do when I'm getting ready to dip these is to pull this up and look at it. And you can see on this plastic wrap that it will get chewed up. And normally when I pull out a pl piece of plastic wrap, I at least quarter it. So that means that there's four layers of plastic wrap. And then you're going to look for tears and rips. This one I just put on a couple of days ago. And I change it out. It does have a tear in it. It's got a tear in it right here. There's a little hole right there. Uh, so that is something that I would absolutely say, you know what? We're not going to take the chance. We're going to put more plastic wrap on it. But I change it out regardless of whether I see it or not every seven to ten days. So if you can do it every week, Great. It, now, that is because of how frequently I use it. If I'm not using it, or if you guys aren't using it as frequently as I am, and you wrap it, and you know it's going on tight, and you sit it on the shelf, as long as it's mostly full, you should be okay. As you start getting content down, if you don't have anything smaller to dump it off into, which would be my first recommendation, I would recommend changing the plastic out and putting in some of that paint saver that I just showed you. I don't have the aerosol. I, I've never purchased it from KBS because I haven't needed it because I normally run through these pretty quick, um, which is why I keep a couple of them on hand. But let's go back to their instructions. 
Use plastic wrap between the lid and the top of the can to stop metal to metal contact as diamond finish clear can permanently seal the lid. Unused paint should never be put back in the can as it will shorten the shelf life and cause pressure buildup and possibly popping the lid. If there's any trouble resealing the can lid tri uh, tightly, transfer and store diamond finish clear in a proportionally sized clean glass jar or new paint can but I, I, I'm going to go with the glass jar. Always store in a cool, dry pay, uh, place. The biggest thing, so I get a lot of questions, which is to be expected because I'm a proponent of this. And a lot of people have had problems with it. So that's why one of the reasons I'm doing this is I'm trying to help you guys save some money, number one, but use this in a better way. Okay, so if you guys are having issues and I ask you questions like, well, how do you store it? How long between uses? How long have you had the current um, product that you've got now? And the, the biggest thing that I see is folks that are using this stuff and storing it in a hot garage or outside in a storage shed or it's in a trailer that is off site and it's not temperature controlled. Folks, if you guys are using this stuff, uh, even if it's only at night, and then you're going into, and notice how slow I dipped that. I didn't jam this in. I used it, I've just dipped it really slow, and I'm not going to dip it immediately back in either, because now that this has been pulled out, it can cause air bubbles. So don't re dip right after you've dipped. That's a good little tip for y'all. And then I put in that tail drip wire. And because I'm not going to be reusing this on the cam, we're going to do that separately. I'm going to use this as I walk this over. This crawl, by the way, will be available if you guys are interested in it. Um, it doesn't have a home, and I created it just for the purpose of this video. So, so now we need to, we've thrown our old plastic wrap away, we need to put on new plastic wrap. So. I get about this much out, mm, a foot to 18 inches, preferably on the 18 inch side. You don't need the scissors with that. I'm going to put this to the back because again, this is a, we're on a time clock with this stuff because it doesn't like air. Air is not its friend whatsoever. But if you have a full jar and you have a bunch in there, usually the fumes of its own, you know, are going to help keep the air out of it, but as that gets lower, I transfer mine to a smaller jar, um, just so I don't have to worry about that, but if you guys are concerned, then you want to put in that paint saver, and there's other products out there, there's Bloxygen, um, but the paint saver that they are selling from KBS of course they want you to use theirs because it's specifically designed for their products. It's not just a money maker. They have designed it to really work to its best ability with these chemicals. You've noticed that I have folded this in threes and then folded it again in half. So we have several layers of this that we're ready to use. And you've also seen that I've pushed all of the air out of this. And you don't, you really don't want the oxygen at all. So now we're going to set it on the lid and I'm just going to press it down. And I'm going to get that on there. The other one, one, you know what, real quick. If you start getting a buildup of KBS around the lip of it, because the baits are slopping against it, get a new jar. Because anytime you have anything that's not a complete seal to your lid, that's going to have uh, an adverse effect on it as well, simply because it's not a tight seal. You've got a little area where air can come in underneath because this is going to be coming in underneath of your plastic wrap. So the next thing that we're going to do, I'm going to pull this just a little bit closer so you guys can see it. I'm going to, with my thumb, put that down like that, and then I'm going to hold this. And now with this, with me putting a little pressure on that, I'm going to pull it even tighter so that there is no way that there's air. And then go ahead and seal that down as tightly as you can. 
And again, folks, if you guys are not in an area that's temperature controlled, you guys can't see it, but I've insulated up there. I've insulated the seal in this roll-up door in the studio. I'm using not only a dehumidifier, but an air conditioner. It's set at 68 degrees. It never gets that cold. But the dehumidifier, I monitor that with just a little. And this is a best practice for tape and paint and all things that you would have. Anything that can be sticky. Because if you're in a humid environment and you're putting tape on your bills, that's going to have an effect on it too. So you'll see that my uh, humidity is right around 50%. That's awesome because I guarantee you outside it's about 78 to 80 percent. We're getting thunderstorms uh, this whole week. That is as tight as I can get it. But if you're not in an area where it's temperature controlled, do yourself the favor and walk it back in your house somewhere and store it out of the reach of pets and kids. Um, that's all you have to do. That's all you all have to do. And that's pretty much the way I use and store KBS. I think we've covered everything that I can possibly cover with you guys. Um, KBS does make that product to help remove oxygen. So if you guys are having any other issues or you have questions, comments, please leave that for me in the description below. I will link KBS coatings and the, the specific products. And uh, just so you know, I do get referrals from KBS, but I, that also helps you. If you guys need this stuff, I have it available for 15% off. I'm going to leave that link in the description below for you as well. If you're a first time user and you don't want to use my link, that's totally cool. Again, I'm not sponsored by KBS. They don't pay me um, to have videos like this. But there are several advantages and benefits that you guys can take care of and get some, get some money off on your first can. So I hope that this has helped you. Please read these. These things are very comprehensive. They go completely through applications, cleanup, clear tips, surface prep, coverage. They mention the same things that I did. Clean size glass jar or a new paint can. Plastic in between. As tight as you can. And I hope that little tip helped. Hold that down. Crack that lid just over the, the one side threads and pull that tight. If you can do that and keep it in a temperature controlled area, it's greatly going to lengthen the shelf life of your product. Jen Cravasi with Jekyll Bates here. I hope I've been a help to you guys today. Check me out on Facebook. You can tweet me. You can Instagram me. You can Snapchat me. I've got a website at www.jekyllbates.com. I am a professional lure artist. That's how I make my way in the world and I use this stuff and have been using it for about four years. We want to help. We definitely want to help you guys out. There are other products available. This is an easy product, which is why I wanted to use it in the first place, because it's just a, a one application. You can dip it, and just real quick, if you want to dip this stuff twice or three times, it gets tacky and dry enough to where you can after about three hours, but I usually, uh, if I'm doing like musky baits or pike or anything that's toothy critter driven baits or salt water, I wait about 12 hours in between dips. Just, just my thought on that. So you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting.